Hi everyone, welcome to Curiosity, the science show presenting the monthly roundup of science related stories. This is for the episode for December 2024, the last episode of 2024, isn't it? This is the episode number 62. Well, December is an exciting month, isn't it? This is the month of solstice. You know, the December solstice happens on 21st of, uh, you know, every year. And uh, well, this year too, right? The December solstice, we, we call it as winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, while it is summer solstice in the southern hemisphere, like in, you know, South Africa or South America or, uh, you know, Australia, Antarctica, isn't it? Yes, and uh, we'll come to it in a short while. And also December is an exciting month of uh, meteor showers. You know, if you're somewhere in the hills or blessed with blue skies, you know, where the pollution is very low. Yeah, so this is an exciting month for you because this is the best month of the year to watch the celestial light show. In December, we have Geminid. Uh, meteor shower, the best meteor shower of the year is Geminid. That happens around 21st or 22nd of this month. And also Ursid meteor shower, another uh, 14th as well as 22nd. Yeah, Geminid is around uh, uh, 22nd while uh, the Ursid is 14th. I will just explain in a while, okay? So Ursid and Geminid are the best two meteor showers in the in, in a year. And also, of course, Perside. Perside happens around uh, uh, our Independence Day. Uh, 14th or 15th of August, that is a precise meteor shower. So all these three meteor shower out of three, two are happening in the month of December. So it's an exciting time, you know, see. So as usual, we'll start with um, the etymology of the word December. So yeah, continuing the, the legacy of the last three months, the fourth month is not different from the, uh, the, the trend started from September, isn't it? Uh, yeah, etymology is the word origin. Well, December, the word comes from Sanskrit. Desha means 10. So it used to be the 10th month of the year when the year was of just 10 months long during the BC time. You know, the, yeah, the Roman calendar system followed, uh, you know, this 10 month system. You know, so that is why it is, um, yeah, it's, that is why the, the etymology is of 10 of the Sanskrit. This is also a month of narcissus and daffodils. You see that the same family, isn't it, of the Amarilla DCA, right? So yeah, that family, narcissus is the, the you know, you might have seen that uh, uh, yellow and uh, uh, white flower. So this is a month of that, yeah. All right, now let us uh, see the roundup of the science-related stories and new papers published in the last month. And uh, as usual, the way I curate these stories, I just see my only yardstick is, is it curiosity inspiring? Is it some imagination involved with these stories? So that's it. I don't fall for this kind of clickbait, for example, a plastic eating, you know, uh, insect discovered. Of course, that kind of story happens again and again, right? Or, uh, you know, the plant extract coated with nanoparticle B, you know, plant extract A coated with nanoparticle B kills cancers sell C. Well, those kind of stories really don't have any curiosity or imagination. These are just like the regular kind of papers, you know, the technical papers. And most of these papers are fake. And most of these papers can't even, you know, uh, scale up. It might work in cell lines, but it will fail when you do that experiment in animal model. And many drugs work in animal model, but then it fails when you do human clinical trials. Right? So yeah, that's the only yardstick. Curiosity inspiring stories for curated stories of uh, this science show. All right, the first is the news coming from Baku. Baku is uh, 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 the capital of Azerbaijan. Uh, yeah, well, it's kind of strange why COP29 recently concluded. COP29 is a conference of parties, the so-called the UN Climate Change Conference. Very famous. Every year it happens, right? So this year, the 29th iteration happened in Baku. 
but azerbaijan is kind of a, um, yeah it's kind of strange place for this kind of conference because yeah it is a it's it's a petrochemical industry you know it's a yeah it, it, the entire economy survived because of the petroleum and fossil fuel highly polluting isn't it not good for the climate change at all and also yeah it is uh, autocratic you know so well how did that go there yeah, well there is a good story well you know it's all about the, the russian vetoing power and they vetoed all the members of the former ussr uh because whoever uh, opposed the russian invasion of the ukraine except you know azerbaijan and armenia well azerbaijan and armenia are also fighting isn't it well yeah you can just read up about it but what is the summary of this cop 29 basically what really happened in that meeting it's about the da loss and damage control as you know the climate change most of it is caused by rich countries the global north while most of its efforts the effects are felt by countries like us the poor countries in the global south so the global south want you know the monetary compensation from the rich countries so that the team led by eu said that well we are ready to give you 300 million us dollar but then the block consisting of the poor countries said well that's nothing we need more than 3 to 4 times of the amount we need at least 1 trillion us dollar well the dialogue didn't work out so yeah it's kind of a failure next cop is going to be cop 30 is going to be in uh, brazil so let's look forward to it you know another key meeting happened in uh, uh you know uh, uh, in south korea you see that it's called un plastic conference isn't it busan in south korea again that's a failure well we need to control this microplastic especially in blue economy right that the ocean isn't it so how do you actually you really need to stop the production of plastic that is the first step to do isn't it well such dialogues happened in in busan but then countries including russia and especially the uae blocked it you know the uae as well as the saudi arabia are you know they well especially saudi arabia isn't it saudi arabia is the biggest um, the the plastic manufacturer in the world because of the petrochemical the plastic as you know it is a byproduct of the petrochemical industries isn't the petroleum industry so yeah they, they blocked it and again the busan conference was a failure unfortunately all right the next uh, uh, important uh, news coming from the last month is right from here in india you know the elephants unfortunately elephants are not in you know it's endangered as per the uh, red uh, red data book of the iucn isn't it it's endangered and yes yeah, so elephant death is being reported from mp uh, 10 uh, elephants were died in uh, october and now the new uh, investigation revealed the cause of their death uh, this happened in uh, some, uh, something called Banthagar, Banthagar Tiger Reserve in uh, Madhya Pradesh. And the cause is now attributed to their uh, food, you know, the millet, something called Bodo millet, infested with fungus. Yeah, that was the cause of their death. And also a new uh, paper, uh, they looked up the elephant death happened in Odisha, Indian, the East Indian state, isn't it? Uh, yeah, East Coast State, Odisha. Well, alarming number of elephants have died there too. 790 elephants in the last one decade. Yeah, of course, in a matter of 10 years, but still, this is a large number. And the, the study argues that the mostly, this most of these deaths can be attributable to electrocution. You know, the yeah, it's because of the, uh, yeah, the electricity, the power line when the elephants put their foot onto it. That is really alarming. And of course, we need to change the, the policies, isn't it? Well, the central government has now introduced something called ONOS for the scientists of India. It's called One Nation, One Subscription. So as you know, the journal subscriptions, uh, most of these journals are paid, isn't it? For yeah, I mean, to get access to these journals like Springer, Oil Saver, you really need to pay a hefty amount, isn't it? Even nature, science, no exception, right? So instead of uh, each university spending money uh, alone, well, crores and crores you need to spend on it, you know. So, well, why not pull all together for a centralized repository for the India? 
that is the plan of Coinoise. I really like this idea. I hope the execution is also flawless. Looking forward to it. So the government has allocated 6,000 crore for uh, the ONOI subscriptions until 2027. That's good news for the scientists in this country. So let's, let's wait and watch. I hope this works flawlessly and my best wishes to the team behind ONOS. One nation, one subscription, you know. Well, another exciting news is coming from Ladakh. The new observatory just, uh, you know, inaugurated there by the TIFR. The observatory is called MACE MACE. Well, MACE is Major Atmospheric Sherenkov Experimental Observatory. Sherenkov was an astronomer from Russia who is behind this idea of observatory just looking for gamma ray coming from extraterrestrial sources yes, you know the gamma ray gamma ray is very powerful charged particle especially emitted by large you know black holes and just before the black holes are being formed as you know the end of the star is called supernova right it's a big explosion and if the, the star is approximately 30 times the mass of sun our own star that explosion supernova is called hypernova so whenever this kind of event happen, then a jet of this gamma particle can come to even on Earth. This similar thing happened in 2022. And way before so many such explosions happened, even one, uh, you know, mass extinction event, the so-called Permian extinction event, there are papers arguing it's caused by the gamma ray explosion, gamma ray burst. So yeah, Macy is looking forward for such, yeah, you know, profiling such events. So yeah, that's very nice news. It's in a, a, a town called Henley, approximately 4.3 kilometers, you know, 4,200 meters is the altitude. So the sky is really blue, you know, and yeah, this is the world's highest gamma ray observatory. So yeah, it's a, it's a good job, TIFR team. So yeah, I wish you the very best. Another news is coming uh, to do with the space exploration Japan, JAXTA, right? Their uh, uh, team like ESA and uh, NASA and uh, ISRO. Japan, it's called JAXTA. They launched wooden satellite. Yeah, that's a very nice news, optimistic, good news, isn't it? For space debris problem concern. It's completely natural, you know, the wooden space, uh, you know, the satellite. It's very nice. Well, news, as you know, everyone have been following the news lately that the Trump got re-elected. Yeah, congratulations, Donald Trump for the re-election. Well, his team, now the things are very clear, the kind of team that the, the Trump is going to lead. So some names uh, which he, he nominated, it's confirmed now. The, the most important position in uh, uh, health and uh, human welfare concerned is uh, the secretary, U.S. Secretary of Health something called HHS department, the most important department, uh, health and human services, right? And that is going to be led by John F. Kennedy Jr. Well, he is the nephew of uh, 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 the Kennedy, the, the, uh, the, prime, the president of the United States, earlier president, right? Yeah, well, he is a very well-known vaccine skeptic. So it's not a good news for scientists from the United States, unfortunately. You know this uh, this person, the John F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, is uh, you know he has been pushing this kind of pseudo scientific ideas that uh, the vaccine causes autism. You know the carriers in in the vaccine is linked with the autism, and also so many such nonsense ideas. Unfortunately, for example, the fluoridation of the municipal water supply system causes IQ uh, decline and dementia. Well, we don't have any single evidence based report on those lines, but. Yeah, well, he's he's pushing that kind of idea. So, yeah, that is going to be. And also even uh, the COVID time, we have seen that so many such controversial ideas like herd immunity was pushed by his team. And yeah, so the, uh, Dr. Dave Weldon is going to be the next president of CDC. Again, this, the Weldon is also infamous for the vaccine skeptic and also pushing for anti-mask mandate. You see, don't wear mask during the COVID-19. Very controversial figure. And also Jay Pattacharya, Pattacharya, he is actually from Bengal, NRI, he is a, you know, he is a doctor working in, he is a physician in Harvard. Again, he is such a controversial figure with the, uh, you know, so many, uh, yeah, so many statements which he made through, throughout the COVID-19, which are anti-science. 
and he is going to lead the NIH, National Institute of Health, and Martin McCary is going to lead FDA, Food and Drug Administration, again a controversial figure, and Janet uh, Nashe Ward is a Surgeon General of the United States. So, well, U.S. well, very powerful, right? And all these key positions. The Janet, for example, uh, she is uh, having her own supplement, you know, like vitamin B and C uh, company, and pushing for supplement-based uh, cure for all these lifestyle ailments. So that doesn't really work, you know. So anyway, that is the team of the Trump. Yeah, that is not a so good news for the science concern, but let's wait and watch. Right, good news coming uh, for the cancer therapeutic. The cervical cancer is now down 60 percentage reduction in mortality. Report in the United States of fantastic. Do you know why? Yeah, because of the vaccine, HPV vaccine, human papilloma virus. The vaccine is very effective and that is the main reason for the reduction in the cervical cancer. That is amazing, isn't it? Well, another news is from AI. As usual, these episodes of the Curiosity invariably feature some news about AI, isn't it? So this one is from the chat GPT-4. So GPT-4 outperform physicians on disease diagnosis. That is amazing, isn't it? So well, it's 90% correct detection from the diagnostic report. So, yeah, well, the, 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 it's, a, it's a very interesting study in a very famous journal called JAMA, that is Journal of American Medical Association, very prestigious journal. So, yeah, the GPT-4 is 90 percentage correct answers. It's a simulation study. And uh, substantially outperform the trained physicians, the doctors, you know, they could be able to identify only 74 percentage, you know, yeah. So, yeah, for the disease diagnosis. So, that, that shows the, yeah, the potential of this kind of AI with the uh, medical care system, isn't it? Well, very interestingly, uh, another curiosity-driven news is coming from Mexico, a Mexican PhD scholar. So, he was just curious to see the, the GPS, you know, the, the QGPS. He was just playing with it. It's a, outs, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's free software, QGPS. If you don't know how to use it, just... YouTube, a lot of videos are there how to use QGPS. Well, this guy was looking at the QGPS for a GIS based, uh, QGIS, you know, so a GIS based record from the NASA. Uh, well, that, that uh, you know, that uh, overlay is of LIDAR, that is a, a laser based detection. Isn't it? LIDAR is very powerful tool. And uh, yeah, he was looking for the ecological paper and the LIDAR data set. For the some forests in the Mayan places, and surprisingly, he saw relics of the whole civilization and new city, Mayan city. The lost city was discovered by him. Fantastic! And city, can you believe it's completely hidden inside the forest? Well, people haven't even saw it, but they saw in lidar images, right? Uh, it's complete with everything you can imagine. Even temple, you know, uh, even a plaza. Right? Pyramids, a grand palace, ball court, the stadium, you know, uh, uh, even a dam and uh, reservoir, everything is there. Uh, well, you need to dig up all this. Yeah, of course, so there's science, it's all evidence based, right? That is amazing thing, yeah. Next story is that the children with high IQ score, there is a high chance that they later in life end up with ADHD. That is a very alarming story, isn't it? The reason why this ADHD is more prone for those high IQ children is believed to be because of the, uh, you know, masking of the symptom. If you are really brilliant early on, so many of the ADHDs, you know, the symptoms are being masked because of the intelligence. So that is a pretty alarming finding. Another ADHD related story from the last month is that uh, you know, these symptoms of ADHD, that is basically attention deficit hyperactive disorder, that is ADHD is all about, you know. So the symptoms associated with this attention deficitness, for example, are milder if you're leading a busier life. So as busy you get, as lesser ADHD symptoms get. That is interesting, isn't it? Yeah, if you have a lot of free time, then chances are high that you suffer really bad Outcomes of the ADHD. Yeah. 
All right, misleading pseudoscientific videos on ADHD are most popular. It becomes viral. That is a new story. They, they were looking at the kind of video, the quality of video versus likes or share, you know. So, yeah, if you compare that with truthful ones, scientifically accurate videos about ADHD had lowest online engagement. So it's same thing with the YouTube videos, like this kind of uh, videos. Right? I, I, I input a lot of my, um, you know, resources and time for developing great contents like this. I hope you like it, right? The, the curiosity. So, well, curiosity, the online engagement is pretty disappointing. Only very few people watch and share. Doesn't matter. I'm doing this work for myself, not really for people around because it substantially increased my teaching, you know. Yeah, and also while writing or oh, what, what not, right? This is really a nice endeavor from my side. So, yeah, this is what the new paper. Well, anyway, you can please check out the show notes for the links of all these papers in the journal, okay? So, you can check it out. Next story is about single singleness, right? The being single is easier and more comfortable for women than men. So, well, the reason is thought to be the, the women has got you know, more extensive social circle, right? And they have uh, lots of good friends and they maintain the friendship. They devote a lot of time on this friendship compared with the men. So the men without friendship, they're completely isolated. The for whole emotional support, the man depends upon the romantic partner. So that is why the singlehoodness is going to be more tougher for men than women, you know? Well, emulsifiers are everywhere in processed food. Emulsifiers are basically the chemical which mixes the oil and water. Usually oil and water doesn't mix. But you need to mix it properly. For example, ice cream, you know, or mayonnaise, right? Mayonnaise is nothing but uh, oil. That is like vegetable oil and egg, isn't it, with water. So, yeah, for making all these things, or cookies, for example. Okay, so emulsifiers are everywhere. Now the new paper is looking for the emulsifiers and uh, gut microbiome for modulating the brain. So gut brain axis change by the emulsifiers. So that is an alarming story. Be, be aware of it. So basically what happened is that the gut microbe, uh, well, good microbes and bad microbes do exist, right? Now, if you eat emulsifier, these microbes in your intestine can cross the, the gut lining and then it, you know, it, it actually triggers a series of events that ultimately result in inflammation and also ultimately diabetes and cognitive decline. So, be aware whenever you're buying some uh, processed food, be aware of lecithin, propylene, Glycol, propylene glycol, very famous and pretty uh, common, you know, emulsifiers. E471, that is a court name of uh, many of these uh, emulsifiers. Polysorbates or mono or diglyceride, all these are emulsifiers. So, yeah, think twice before purchasing any food containing emulsifiers in light of this new story. Well, quality of the rice. How does it fluctuate with the climate change? Yeah, it is degrading. The new paper is coming from Chinese and uh, uh, Japanese team. You know, it is mainly from the Japan, the study. Published in Nature, the British famous journal Nature. Is that the, 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 the quality of rice is substantially getting degraded because of the climate change. Especially because of the nighttime rise in temperature. So yeah, crucial factor for the nutritional quality of rice is the temperature at the night time. Daytime is still tolerable, but at night you need low temperature. But the, even the nighttime temperature is rising. So that is why the quality of rice is now degrading with the climate change. That is really bad news, isn't it? Another news is our own history. Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis. We lived for a long, long time. Even we had mating, you know interspecific mating the hybridization happened for millions of years you know so anyway now this not millions but yeah that, that is basically homo and uh, pan trogloid the, the chimpanzee this is for thousands of years yeah well if you look back in time 1,000 uh, years back that is one lakh and twenty thousand years back we 
used to live together that is what the latest evidence say and more than that both of us started uh, you know the uh, 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 what is it the uh, uh, yeah uh, basically the burying burying of the dead so that cultural event happened almost concurrently in homo sapiens and the neanderthalensis so that means we shared the culture also together so the burying practice happened uh, 1 lakh 20 thousand years back and that is common between these two species that means that we we both shared the cultural values that is pretty interesting isn't it new evidence suggests the miranda that is uh, the moon of uranus have subsurface liquid o liquid ocean and also prospects of you know extraterrestrial life in uh, miranda that is uh, now the latest comer in the dialogues about the uh, you know exobiology or extraterrestrial life that's pretty interesting news yeah it's coming from Hop, uh, you know new hampshire university astro astrobiology department that's very interesting well the cover image of uh, this month's curiosity is the maze observatory please check out the show notes for the the story in my blog where you can get the links of all these uh, stories one click link right yeah and uh, yeah that's it about the stories now coming the next uh, phase of the the curiosity uh, is the observances right the curiosity magazine also covers science related observances of every month so this is the month of december the first of december today is the world aids day tomorrow the second december is a fionicid meteor shower i told you december is a great month for meteor shower not only gemini and usir but also many other meteor showers so stay tuned fionicid meteor shower is second it the peak you know and also tomorrow is our national pollution control day you know well yeah in the north india the center gangetic plains not just in india but also pakistan india and bangladesh we had very very bad air pollution and fortunately the, the things have uh, improved in delhi we have seen that the, the aqy was 1700 can you believe it and i happened to be in delhi during those days just transiting and i'm the only one wearing mask and only very very few people were wearing mask well that shows the travesty right literacy and scientific literacy are completely different friends being scientifically literate can help you to live longer think about it all right third of december is another important observance here in india the annual uh, observance uh, in memory of lives lost in popal gas tragedy the worst industrial disaster everywhere all around the world happened here in india well fifth is moon venus conjunction and also soil day sixth is another meteor shower puppet valid meteor shower eighth is moon saturn conjunction and also mono serotid meteor shower look at it so many meteor showers tenth is the un human rights day eleventh is sigma hydrid meteor shower and also mountain day the un mountain day 14th france or 14th is the best day for meteor shower in the whole year geminid meteor shower every year it happens on 14th you know uh, it's the most predictable and most awesome meteor shower please check it out and also that that day is the best day to see orion nebula in orion constellation you know hanging from the belt of the orion isn't it yeah check it out well you can see it if you have a a, a small mic a binocular all these are binocular events you know yeah you don't really need to have a telescope for it you know 15th is moon jupiter conjunction and also the the full moon of the month the cold moon happens on uh, 15th of december 18th is moon mars conjunction 19th is another meteor shower called leonis 21st friends is one of the my favorite day well i love four days of the year two equinoxes and two solstices december solstice is on 21st well you know the solstice the december solstice is basically the shortest day longest night it's also known as midwinter day in the northern hemisphere while the december solstice in southern hemisphere is the longest day the midsummer 
for them right australians right yeah that is uh, yeah it's a december solstice is a very important day observance also mid some mid winter day here let's look forward to it let's celebrate it like our foremothers celebrated you know thousands of years back pagan traditions isn't it yule is another pagan tradition happens in this month all right 22nd is another meteor shower called ursid well ursid is also best three meteor showers of the year geminid and ursid and also the, the other perseid meteor shower in august right 22nd of december the, the day of ursid meteor shower is also good for math lovers you know i teach statistics in my university and also through swayam so yeah national mathematics day is 22nd of december let's celebrate it yeah maths also is highly curiosity driven field isn't it 23rd is the day for farmers the food yeah thanks right whenever you eat a grain of rice yeah ideally you should be thankful to the farmers who grow it yeah it's a kisan divas yeah 23rd in here in india 27th is epidemic preparedness day the un day very very important day to prevent the next outbreak of covid 19 and many other such you know yeah pandemics epidemics and pandemic right yeah spillover events is the main reason for it and uh, yeah we we really need to um, you know work hard to prevent such spillover events to prevent the next epidemic or pandemic from happening now finally the last stage of the curiosity magazine is opportunities for the young scientists and researchers and students well dbt ra call is open now the the you know the research associate ship call is open uh, 3rd january is the deadline for it and also the branko vice fellowship uh, call is open that is the society in science call it's it's from the uh, the uh, switzerland you know if you are in, in within 5 years of the phd so it's only for the young researchers uh, after getting the phd within 5 years you can apply for it you can go anywhere in the world and it support your travel and stay it's a fantastic call you know please check it out if you are a young scientist you know branko wise very prestigious fellowship and also call for nominations for 2024 agarwal prize is still open for ecological economics deadline is 15th of this month uh, next for also for the early career researchers call for early career fellows for the intergovernmental science policy platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services well this is called ipbes it's a un affiliate body ipbes well yeah i have friends from ipbes in the international science council yeah so they share the stories coming from the international science council deadline is 10th january please check it out well uh, all the links are in the show notes please check out the show notes for it and also call for applications for the early career journalists invited to cover a flagship science event right so if you are working in science communication and science journalism please check out you can apply for this grant uh, deadline is 6th december you know and also call for the projects uh, you know including cross cutting and working group proposals by the international arctic science committee if you're working like me antarctic or arctic right you can apply for it 6th january is a deadline and as usual several jrf calls are open and uh, please do check out our curiosity the you know the, the 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 facebook group and my volunteers and moderators we all share of course the public also right if you if you have some science related story that you would like to share or the science related news or opportunities for the students you are welcome to do so so please check out our facebook group uh, the link is again in the show notes and that's it i wish you the very best throughout the month of solstice the december solstice let december be curiosity inspiring month for you so please take care of yourself throughout this month and uh, yeah uh, if you can please take care of someone else too as usual bye i'll see you with yet another episode of curiosity in 2025 till then goodbye